Welcome to the Phase 4 Weekly Report for 9th of March, 2018. An Ascent Conference Call Part 2 on careful cots of a powerful SDR is proposed for the 14th of March. Phase 4 Space organized and hosted an Ascent Conference Call on the 28th of February with Nate Temple and Neil Pandeo from Edis Research. The purpose of the meeting was to explore the idea of a careful cots of the E310 and X310 Universal Software Radio Peripheral USRP devices. Nate and Neil described the USRP lineup, gave a brief history of Edis research, and expressed their enthusiasm for an effort in this direction. The most significant action item resulting from this meeting was to include additional Edis research personnel for business planning and engineering scoping. One engineering possibility discussed was to revisit and reactivate the tritium line as a base design. Phase 4 space is interested in a part at least as large as the 7045 and is interested in using the Unisec electrical bus standard. The tritium was not productized and is not on the current Edis Research product roadmap, but was demonstrated at GNU Radio Conference and other events. Since the initial conference call, several conversations have occurred within Edis Research, and a conclusion has been reached. Edis Research is unable to provide resources or support for Tritium. This design will not be released for a careful COTS redesign. It was never fully productized and has been retired. The code supporting it has bit rotted badly and will not be released. However, Edis Research can provide support for the E310, E312, X300, X310, and the upcoming E320. The support is given enthusiastically as those are active current products. Support in this context means technical and engineering advice, primarily from Neil and Nate. It is not yet clear whether Edis Research could provide the Gerber files or the full bill of materials, or both, for these devices. Given that relayout is going to be required for thermal and size reasons, the Gerber files may not be necessary, and only the full bomb would be needed. A full bomb would be easier to release than the Gerber. An NDA would be required in order to use the bomb. So in between now and then, what can we do? Well, we can start a layout with what we know from the schematic. The question now is, which schematic? E310, E312, X300, or X310, or the E320? Zach Lefke wrote to the Phase 4 mailing list about his experience with the E310 at Virginia Tech. I'm going to read the whole thing because there's a lot of good stuff in here. Now, you can skip ahead to pick up after the email if you want to hear about the GNU radio conference. Please enjoy these photos of kittens during the narration. FYI, I've now put three E310 USRPs in space aboard sounding rockets via the Rocksat X project. They survived 20 plus Gs at launch, so they're plenty sturdy. They were only in space for about five minutes in a sealed enclosure, so maintained pressure, temperatures were actually pretty warm from the launch friction, but they performed excellently from an RF perspective. No attempt to use the onboard GPS or IMU in the E310. The rocket made it to Mach 5, went 100 plus kilometers in altitude, so we suspected the GPS would fail, either due to the ITAR velocity altitude restrictions on GPS, or would fail to lock up due to excessive speed and the fact that it is in a metal tube all the way up there until just before apogee, requiring a cold start when the skirt separates and the payloads go active. It would take too long to lock up to be useful information as the payloads were only on for less than five minutes. I've heard rumors from a source I can't cite that they perform miserably in high radiation environments, though, in their off-the-shelf configuration. Not sure what the actual failure was, but I suspect the power conditioning and not the zinc. Hence the desire for the lighter weight radiation-hardened Astro SDR from Rincon, which is essentially a single-board E310 without all the extras that aren't needed for space. We also launched a Kuhn Electronics S-Band PA, and it performed surprisingly well in these extreme conditions. Not sure if you're planning to launch an E310, E300, or just using it for development, but either way, watch out for the following gotcha. There is a funky firmware bug in the microcontroller, as of about a year ago, might be fixed now, that controls the boot process. 
Basically, the default mode is for the E3XX to boot when the power button is pushed. You can override this in the OS by setting a flag bit with a simple echo one type command that will cause it to boot when power is applied to the DC power port. However, this bug will rear its head ever so often and somehow the microcontroller will overwrite that boot flag bit and revert back to booting only when the power button is pressed. Not sure how an off-chip microcontroller can affect a memory location accessible to the host OS and the zinc and vice versa. Shared memory location somewhere? Very annoying when you have everything all buttoned up inside a payload and you have to figure out a way to snake an Ethernet or USB cable in there to reset that bit. The number of power cycles before the revert is random, but I've never seen it revert with only 10 power cycles or so. Sometimes it takes 100 or more. Sometimes 20 is enough, hence I call it random. Our fast solution, the day before the payload was delivered to NASA, we found it way too late in the development cycle, about a month before the payload was delivered, was to sit there and power cycle the payload over and over and over again until the revert happened. We then buttoned everything up, did one more test, increment the power cycle count by one, and handed it over to the integration folks at Wallops. The students doing the integration with the rocket kept careful track of how many power cycles the payload went through during integration. Our last test, initial checkout at Wallops, GPS rollout, etc. That number, I think about five times, can't remember now, definitely less than ten. Translated directly to our pucker factor on launch day with lots of I hope it boots up muttering, we actually had two E310s in the 2017 payload and both displayed the same behavior relative to the boot issue with different numbers of power cycles between them before the revert. In the end, it worked. I found one obscure post about the issue on a board somewhere. I'd have to dig out my notes for the link that referenced the issue. Someone from Edis had a recommended microcontroller firmware hack to reflash the microcontroller with a couple of changes to the code that would permanently disable the boot from button mode and always cause boot when power was applied to the DC port. We were too close to launch and too unskilled with the microcontroller reflash process to attempt the patch. I believe he said they acknowledged the bug and that they would try to incorporate a fix in the next firmware release. Not sure if that happened or not. And this is all from Zach, KJ4QLP, from Virginia Tech. So that's just a little taste of the sorts of things that you have to worry about when you have an embedded device. GNU Radio Conference 2018 tickets are available. Follow the link in the notes. This whole conference is packed with wonderful experiences and fun. Come join Phase 4 Ground at our DVB-S2 and DVB-S2X workshop and Hackfest, presented by Open Research Institute. This has a goal of producing and testing an open source DVB-S2 receiver in GNU Radio, primarily for AMSAT. Please share this with whoever you think would love to come. There will be a new user track, as well as a lot of advanced content workshops, vendors, demonstrations, and multiple social events. See you there.